Thank you very much for that kind introduction. And even though, as your uh, Rotarian mentioned, I was born in Belize, I'm an honorary Jamaican now, having lived here for what? 20, since 2008, I've been here. So that's, how many years is that? 14 years now. Married a Jamaican, have Jamaican children. So yeah, I have Jamaican in me. <laughs> I am also now uh, an honorary, what you call Mandeville people, Mandevillian. <laughs> I'm a recent import to your beautiful town. My family and I moved here in December. So I'm very pleased to be here. I'm very honored to be invited to be your guest speaker at this lovely event. And let me say that since we have been here these past few months, even though, you know, Mandeville is known for getting a little, a, a tad chilly sometimes, the reception has been very, very warm. You are very warm people, so thank you for having me. Well, all protocols observed to our head table. Congratulations to the incoming president, and thank you also to the outgoing team for your very hard work. And thank you to everybody who is here, Rotarians and invited guests. It is my pleasure once again to be here. We have a lot to talk about. I have a, I have a few things on my mind that I would like to say. But first, I want to start by asking you a question. And I know that you're eating, so if you would spare me. What comes to your mind when you think about finance? Anything at all? Anybody? Money. money. <laughs> OK, yes, money. Great, great word. Great word. What else? Wealth. Wealth. OK. Do you think, when you hear the word finance, do you think it is easy or hard? Hard? Most people saying hard. Anybody say easy? Nobody? Anyone? One lady raises her hand and says, yes, it's easy. She's a, you're a banker. <laughs> well, that is certainly understandable. Let me ask you another question. Does anybody here invest in the stock market? Show of hands. A few hands. I'd like that to be many more hands after tonight. Just a few hands. So I grew up with a narrative that in order to be successful, what you have to do, I'm sure you all know this story, you've heard it, right? You have to go to school and study hard. And then you get a good job and you work hard, right? And then you save and you buy a house. And that is pretty much the extent of the financial education <laughs> that I received handed down from my parents. And I'm sure that sounds very, very familiar to a lot of you as well. But let me tell you something. I did those things, studied very hard, you heard in the bio, passed with distinction, bachelors and masters, and I, I got the jobs, and well, I no longer work at Nationwide, but I worked at CVM Television, worked at Nationwide, worked at many media houses in both Belize and here in Jamaica, and I wasn't able to save very much, to be honest, <laughs> and I wasn't able to buy that house, even though I studied hard, and worked hard and you know tried my best I became a very professional success story and people look at me on the TV but a financial failure and I wasn't able to to buy that house as the the promise that was made to me as a child that if you do these things this is what uh, will result and that didn't happen and as a matter of fact because I was earning little despite my degrees wasn't earning, you know, the big, big salary because I chose a profession that doesn't pay big, big dollars. Uh, that in turn led me to borrow, and so I ended up in debt and unsustainable debt at that. And like I said, I was highly successful professionally, but struggling financially. Does that sound familiar to anybody in the room? Anybody can relate to that? So I want to change the narrative about how we think about money and how we think about finance in tandem with your theme for Rotary of infinite possibilities. There is so much that you can do as Rotarians to change your own narrative and that of others, your children, your grandchildren, and your story, your personal story that's going to be handed down from generation to generation, your story 
of wealth, your story of just your life. And it starts with reframing finance as something simple and accessible. So that's the other thing I forgot to ask you. I asked you if you think finance is easy or hard. Most people said hard. Finance should be simple, easy to understand. And the other thing is it should be accessible. Because there is a feeling that wealth and finance is for a specific group of people. It's for the elite. It's for people who are already wealthy, who were born into wealth. Mommy and daddy were wealthy, and so you inherit the wealth. But no, it should be simple, and it should be accessible. And it should also be something that everyone is interested in. Why? We're all interested in money, and it affects all of our lives. There's this perception, like I said, that stock market investing in particular is for the wealthy and the elite, and that in order to understand it, you have to be highly educated and you have to have economics degree and finance degree and work at the bank like Ms. Rotarian here in the front. In fact, even on the news, the business news section, how many of you watch the business news? Few hands, right? Sometimes. Some of you might stick around because sports is after business, right? <laughs> so you kind of bear through the business section in order to get to, to sports. Most people stop watching the news when that part comes on. But my vision for my company, Kalila Reynolds Media KRM, is to become like the digicel of financial education and financial news. You get what I'm saying? Because when digicel came around in the early 2000s, Cell phones were for the wealthy and the elite, right? It was for the business class, and only certain top people could have a cell phone. And then when they came around, they democratized the use of this device. They said, no, this is for everybody. Everybody should have access. Everybody should be able to afford it. This can benefit so many lives. And now we're at a place where most people have two phones, right? So we want to be like the Digicel of financial education and financial news. You want to make it accessible to all, not just for the elite, but for everyone, because business news is regular news. News about the economy is for everybody. Stock market investing is for everybody in this room, and I hope that by the time I leave here this evening, you will be inspired on Monday morning to go and open your investment accounts. So when I say, Business news is about everything that goes on in our everyday lives. When you think about something as something like inflation and how that is reported, that's a, that's a great example. It's a hot topic right now because inflation is very high. But usually, before this year, when the inflation report comes out every month, it might get a line or two in the news. And it will start something like this. <clears throat> okay, so I'm putting on my newscaster voice now. The consumer price index increased by X percentage points, and point to point inflation was Y, and year to date inflation was Z. And nobody understands that, and nobody cares. But if you say to people, bread prices went up by $20 last week, no, you care about that, right? or $100, now you care about that and you can relate to it. And it's the same thing. We're talking about the very same subject matter, inflation. And so this is the approach that I have taken in trying to relate you know, business news, economics news, to the ordinary person, to the stock news, to the ordinary person, because these are things that we indeed care about if we take the time to understand what it actually is about. So we make it immediately relatable to ordinary people and our problems and things that directly affect our pockets. And reporting on the stock market is the same. It's not something aloof for rich people. It's simply collective ownership of Jamaican businesses. It is the key to wealth for ordinary Jamaicans because it allows us to own shares in the country's most successful businesses. And in return, our investment allows them to grow. 
And when businesses grow, Jamaica's economy grows, and then businesses can in turn hire more people and pay us better wages. So it's a win-win-win situation. Additionally, it has a very low barrier to entry. Did you know that you can, let me ask you the question. I won't give you the answer just yet. How much money do you think you need in order to start investing? Jamaican or US? 5,000 Jamaican? It could be, who said $10? Jamaican or US? Jamaican, it could be any amount. Literally any amount, 500, even $10 if your particular broker allows that amount. And there are brokers who allow you to start with very, very, very little money. And that's the thing. A lot of people think that you need to have a lot of money in order to start. But I always encourage people to just start with whatever you have. Even if it's $500, at the next 500 next month, and the next $1,000 the following month, and eventually it starts to build up. It doesn't take up much of your time unless you want it to, and it doesn't take a lot of money to start. So I'm gonna give you a very simple way that I want you to start thinking about the stock market. When you own stock, it simply means that you are part owner of a company. So when that company does well, you reap the benefits as part owner. So of course you wanna pick companies that are likely to do well. Well, how do you do that? It's simple observation. So people think that you have to go study economics and business and finance and all these things to know what to do. But for the most part, simple observation will serve you very well. I'm gonna give you a, an example right here from Mandible, and I see Mr. Heaven sitting in the back. I didn't even know he would be here, but I had the example prepared. So as Mandible people, as Mandible people, you are well aware, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been told that Fesco gas station is the cheapest in Mandible. Yes? Somebody said no. <laughs> it's certainly one of the, more, the most affordable. If not the cheapest, it's among the cheapest. And they also have good customer service, right? You go Fesco gas station, they always have crowd. People are always patronizing it, and it's for a reason. So as Mandeville people, you know the value that Fesco brings. You know Fesco always have customers. You know Mr. Heaven and that he's very well respected in the community. And you know, he's here. You probably even know him personally. So when Fesco announced last year that they wanted to open up more gas stations all across the country, and that to do this, they wanted to raise money through an IPO, which simply means that they want to sell shares to you in the public so that you can now become part owners of Fesco, what do you do? You, you bought, did you buy into it? You never, <laughs> well, you never apply, you never get any. <laughs> oh, you applied too late. Ah, okay. So, it closed too well, that's the other thing. So you have to know when you have offers of a certain size, you have to know that you need to apply even before it opens. So that when it does open, you're already standing in line. If you wait for the open date, you're going to be too late on most of these offers out now. So when you, who know about Fesco, because at that point it wasn't necessarily a nationwide name, but it's well known in this community, when you reflect on your experience with Fesco, and what you know of the co company, and what you know of the leaders, and you think, hmm, is this an experience that people across Jamaica would want? And do I trust Trevor Heaven and his team to do what they say they're going to do with the money? And if the answer was yes, then this should have been a no-brainer for you, even without you know, analyzing all the details just based on your experience and your observation with this company. And if you took that risk last year when they did the IPO, you would have been very handsomely rewarded indeed. Because the IPO price last year was 80 cents a share. Anybody knows what? How much for it now? It's over $6 now. So if you had invested 
$80,000 in fiscal last year, this year it would be worth $600,000 in one year. If you had invested even $8,000, this year your $8,000 would be $60,000 in one year. Because it turns out that Kingston people did indeed want the value that FESCO provides in the retail gas industry. And even though there's a lot of competition, FESCO's new gas stations at Ferry and Beachwood Avenue always run, always have line. Every time you pass there, and because they compete on value and service. And those are two things that people around the country desire from their service stations. And you here in Mandeville had the advantage because you were already familiar with this brand. So, and you'd see the evidence in an article that we ran on my website in May. So the Observer newspaper now pick it up too, that FESCO's increase in profits have more to do with volume than higher gas prices, meaning that they're selling more. A lot of people assume that they're making more money because you know, gas prices raise, but not necessarily true. It's because they're selling a whole lot more gas than they did last year. And that's another observation that you could have easily made being proud Mandeville people. Everybody knows gas prices are high, and that people would be looking to save every penny they would when they could when gas prices are high and that they would go looking for the bargains and that FESCO provides those bargains. All you had to do was observe. You didn't have to have any fancy degree, any experience. You didn't have to be a banker. All you had to do was observe. So look around now in your community and what do you see? Well, I see sovereign going up, complex building, as the proven building are complex in Mandeville, as the Popeyes just opened, as the renovations happening, as the construction going on. So what opportunities for investment do those things present? You see, road building, highway is coming to Mandeville. Well, not just here, but around the country, you see this type of development taking place. So when you, when you start thinking like an investor now, especially a stock market investor, you start thinking, hmm, okay, lots of construction going on. I should become a part owner in Carib Cement. I should become a part owner in Lumber Depot. I should become a part owner in Fosrich, Lighting and Electrical. I should become a part owner in anything that services the industries that are doing well. Right? Make sense? Yes. Did you need a degree to know that? No, you didn't. Simple observation. Another thing you may observe. A few years ago, even up to now, cran water was a thing, right? Everybody drinking cran water. And now all of a sudden you notice that all your friends start drinking iCool. Like, huh, iCool, interesting. Then you, you buy it yourself and you try it, you're like, okay, it's not bad. Who make iCool? Lasco Manufacturing, listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Clearly, this is a hot product, it's doing well. I should become a part owner in Lasco Manufacturing. Again, simple observation. In your kitchen, what brands do you buy all the time? Somebody said Grace. Grace has been around for 100 years. If you always buy Grace products, doesn't it make sense for you to become a part owner in that company? So that when that company does, what does well, and when you support and buy their products, you're also supporting yourself because when Grace pays out dividends from their profits, you're getting back money from the same money that you spend. It's simple observation. Business is shaped by the things that are happening around us. It doesn't take a lot to understand what's going on. We all feel it, we all see it, we taste it, 
We smell it, we hear it, we observe it. And that's what I try to get people to understand, that the stock market is not this big, scary place for rich people. It is how ordinary people like us can get rich. All you have to do is observe and connect the dots. And once you start seeing the world in this way, so many opportunities open up to you. Once you start paying attention to what is happening around you, it presents a great opportunity for you to generate wealth for yourself, for the businesses that you support, and for the country. All you have to do is observe. Even in times like this, when things are hard. So yes, you can go to school and learn all about the PE ratios and the various analytical tools, and those will help you, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. There are just a few basic things that you need to know before you start. And these are really things more about yourself than anything else. One, how comfortable are you with taking risk? And two, what is your reason for investing? These will determine every decision that you make as an investor. Because if you're conservative, you may want to stay away from investing in maybe a startup company that doesn't have a long track record because the beginning is going to be rocky for that startup company. And every time the stock price dip by a clutch of your heart that you can't manage, that might not be for you. You may want to opt for something slow and steady and reliable, like we mentioned Grace Kennedy earlier, that's literally been around for 100 years. Just know that you pay a price for playing it safe, and your reward is not going to be as high as if you took some more risk. And if you're OK with that, then cool, because you know that is your personality type. But if you thrive on risk, then a new company you, using brand new technology is probably going to excite you, right? Now, Mr. Mann says, edufocal, new technology, new company. Oh, OK, that's exciting. So now it could go either way. People will either love it or hate it. And if they hate it, you lose. But if they love it, you stand to make a good profit by being an early investor. You just have to know what your personality and your personal investing philosophy is. And the next thing that you need to know about yourself is what are you investing for? Especially the time period and how much money you need to make. So if you want to make $200,000 to take your family on summer vacation next month, that's going to require a much different strategy than if you're saving for retirement in 30 years. A short-term flip will require a lot more risk than a long-term, slow, and steady gain. So that's why people always ask me, this is probably the question I get asked the most, what should I invest in? And I'm like, I can't tell you that. I need to know you. I need to know your personality. I need to know why are you investing. It's not a simple pick one, two, three. It all depends on you. So see, it really is simple. Any change of heart? Anybody thinks it's still hard? No, I hear a lot of people saying no, so good, I've done a good job so far. And as Rotarians, I want you to spread this message. Go tell it on the mountain, you know, become evangelist for this news, spread it far and wide. I want you to open your investment accounts Monday morning, go and open your accounts with whatever you have, $500, whatever money you have, depending on the broker, some have higher thresholds for opening. Some, there's some that you can open with no money, depending on where you go. And encourage everyone that you know to open their accounts and invest your money in Jamaican businesses. And importantly, I see at least one child in the house, teach your children about it. Ideally, I would like financial education to be included on the education curriculum because my parents never taught me any of this stuff because guess what? They didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know it themselves. In fact, I'm not teaching them. 
So if you as Rotarians could lead that advocacy for financial literacy to be a core part of our education system, that could truly make a difference because after all, it does pass your four-way test. Is financial education the truth? Yes. Is it fair to all concerned? If you know, it's fair to people who know and it's not fair to people who don't know. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? There we go. But until the time comes that the powers that be realize that this should be on the national agenda, we need to take it into our own hands to spread this message and teach our children and our neighbors and our friends and anyone who will listen. This is how we will simultaneously build Jamaican businesses, grow the economy, and create personal wealth for ourselves. There are infinite possibilities. So, let's get this money. <laughs> Thank you very much.